breaks the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross you laid down your life that I would be set free I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings the chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan? son and daughter the king of glory the king above all kings who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings this is a you've done for me worthy is the lamb who was slain
Today is Easter Sunday, and I welcome all of you to such an August meeting. Our expectation is strong, and it's always the believer's hope. Amazingly, Jesus, our Lord, rose up from the dead, and it is the power of the church. And when we come together like this to deepen the, the, the reality of this revelation, you know what it does to us? It brings to us a real realization. Rear uncovering 
and a better insight of what Jesus has done for us. Today, we're much more powerful as a church, powerful as the body of Christ, powerful as individuals to enrich the world with what is missing. I want you to feel very comfortable as we share the word of God. Last Friday, we had a reflection, a reflection of what Jesus has done for us all. And I know that it brought some in-depth insight to what we have missed for all these past weeks. And I know that this is keeping you alive and putting you strong, keeping you strong on your feet so that you can always have the consciousness of God and pray to God. Because it's only by that that our, our lives becomes meaningful and real. We will pray for this sick world because the church has the answer and they are expecting the answer from the church. So we will pray to our God who has a key to undo all things. And when we pray, we will have the remedy. So don't be very quiet. Don't be quiet at this time. You've got to pray and we all have to pray in the name of Jesus. Tap your friend by you and say, we have a living hope. We have a living hope in Jesus Christ, our Lord, the manifestation of God, who took away our sin and reconciled us all unto God. He who speaks better things for us and intercedes on our behalf to our God. Yes, he who defeated the devil on the cross, he who set the captives free from their graves, he who gives us a blessed hope for the resurrection of the dead and for the, the lifting of the living unto the presence of God when it is the final time of his return to this earth. The Lord is at work in us and we praise him for that. I want us to pray as we go into the word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, what a blessed hope you have given to us is the joy of the church. I personally, I am so joyful and hopeful that something awesome is about to manifest. Yes, in Jesus' mighty name, because you are giving us another dimension and sharpening a cutting edge against darkness, against evil, against what the enemy is perpetrating on this land. Lord, it's you who have the best love. And we pray in the name of Jesus that you will, you will break the captivity of men. You will destroy the bondage of men where the enemy has kept them in perpetual bondage. Break the bondage of men. Break the, break the bondage of men and bring knowledge in place of ignorance. Bring insight in the place of God, Father, of lack of it. In the name of Jesus, that without you we can do nothing. Lord, we want to we want to deepen ourselves one more time into this resurrection hope and bless our souls as you speak to us all in Jesus' name. Amen. I want us to turn our Bible to if you are here and uh, you are ready for the word of God. I want you to open to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 8. I will be reading from verse 11. Romans chapter 8 reading from verse 11 and the bible say that but if the spirit of him that raised up jesus from the dead if the spirit of him that raised up jesus from the dead dwells in you he that raised up christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you oh hallelujah can i repeat again Bible said that, but if the same, if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. God's word is authentic, it's infallible, it doesn't fail. God's word is not premised on falsehood. God's word is the word of God and God attests to it. 
that his word will never fail. His word will never fail. For our God is immutable. God mm -hmm. does not lie. And what the scripture is saying over here is that there is a spirit in, of God that raised Jesus from the dead. There's a spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead. And if the same spirit dwells in you, dwells in who? If the same spirit that dwells in Jesus, that raised him from the dead, dwell inside of you, who is listening to me today, the spirit will quicken our mortal bodies. I want you to understand that it will quicken our mortal bodies, which means that, which means that the spirit will revive or make alive that which that which was dead that which is incapacitated that which lacks vim that which lack the the capacity to do marvelous things so if the spirit dwells in us the spirit will bring revival to our bodies and I want you to understand that talking about the resurrection, when the church is celebrating the resurrection, and we say that the resurrection is the, is the hope of the church, is the hope of the believer, this resurrection can be, it will be impossible without the Holy Spirit. It will be impossible without the Holy Spirit. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in the believer. Who is the believer? If the believer is the one who is born again, who is born again by the word of God, he who accept Christ into his life and surrendered his or her life to the Lord, that he, Christ, will take control over their lives and they live their life for Jesus. The born again or the believer is the one who has been regenerated who has been given a new birth. God's word says that, that if we are in Christ, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So this is what happens to the believer. The believer moves on in life, not by himself or herself. They move on in life through Christ, who empowers us to do great things in Jesus' mighty name. And the question I want to ask this morning is, does this spirit of Christ dwells in you? Does the spirit of Christ dwells in you? If you do not have the spirit of Christ in you, the Bible says you are none of his. So many have the spirit of the world. Or they have the spirit of the devil that patterns after the things of darkness or pattern after the things of this world. But we believers, we have the Spirit of Christ in us. Oh, hallelujah. And we are led by the Spirit of Christ. We are led by the Spirit of Resurrection. The Spirit of Resurrection inside of us tells us that it is impossible with man, but it is possible with God. Hallelujah. It is impossible with man, but it is possible with God. But the thing that cannot be accomplished in a natural flesh, the resistance we have to resist against the world, the decision that we have to make, because it is hard to make, the Spirit of Christ in us condition us, strengthen us, empowers us to make that decision for the sake of of ourselves and for the sake of posterity and for the sake of our nation. It is important that marvelous things are done. If the Spirit dwells in you, it shall quicken your mortal body. And I repeat again, to quicken is to revive or make alive. To quicken is to revive or make alive. If something is living, then that thing must be quick or sharpened. 
to bring it to life or restore it to formal flourishing. And this can only be done through the Spirit of Christ. Let me read this scripture to you. If, if you are here with me, let me read this scripture to you. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. I read verse 1 to 2. The Bible says that, And you have he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past we walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desire of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Verse 4, it says that, listen, verse 4 says that, but God who is rich in mercy, for his great love, for well, he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, have quickened us together with Christ. By grace are ye saved, and have raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. Now verse 7 says that, that in the ages to come, he might shew the exceedingly riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Wow, 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 wow. He have, we have he quickened. We have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and in sins. Sin made it impossible for us to live the full life God has ordained for us. Alienating ourselves from God made it impossible for us to come to our full potential of life that God has given to us. Many may think that they are successful without Him, but that success is failure. It's only hanging. God is expected us to produce in our full capacity. Do marvelous things. Remember our Lord Jesus said, Greater works will ye do. Who was he talking to? He was talking to the believer. He was talking to the church. That greater works are expected of us to be accomplished in life. But is the church producing it? No. We are all living below standard. Because we have never given the full, the full, uh, uh, what do I want to say? We have never given our lives so fully to God and are not being conscientized enough by the power that must work within us. We have not been conscientized by the transformation power that has wept us and put us in link with God, that God will want to use us as a conduit to do marvelous things and great things. Beloved, Jesus was willing to go to the cross. The manifestation of God, the fullness of God. He went to the cross. He fulfilled the assignment God gave him to redeem all men unto God, to break our chains and bondages and restore us to a living hope. And I can tell you, the rejoicing in my spirit because God has removed the scale of my eyes. God has given him an ear to hear God has given me an understanding to know. God has given me a revelation to hold on to. That life is incomplete without Jesus. It's impossible. You cannot claim life without Jesus. He makes a difference in our life. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Praise the name of the Lord. So with the resurrection power, which is the Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, 
we have the power that is greater than what the devil can do against us. I repeat again. We have the power that is greater than what man can do against us or what a devil can do against us. People don't understand this. But it's premise on the word of God. What did he say? It says, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. What is in the world? Terror. What is in the world? Torture. What is in the world? Distortion. What is the world? Distraction. What is the world? Impossibility. What is the world? The world cannot comprehend. They can't comprehend that their battle to our doors, their battle against us cannot just succeed because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Christ defeated the enemy and he has handed to us the spoils of victory so that we will continue to live in victory. But there is one, one very particular word that I want to use here this morning. It says to triumph over him. To triumph. Triumphing over him is not to be victorious. Triumphing over him is to celebrate the victory. Celebrate the victory. When you are successful, you celebrate the victory. And you know, we have victory because Christ, the Lord, has given us the victory. What I'm saying this morning, if it's not exciting, then I want to put it this way. We have the power that is greater than the power of sin and is greater than the power of death that is within. It is necessary for Christ to rise from dead. Ordinarily, men have no chance to experience what we are presenting, what I'm presenting today. Man, ordinary man has no chance. But this is a sign pointing to you and I that our bodies will never see corruption. It's pointing to you and I that even if this house of this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, hallelujah, there's a blessed hope in scripture. We have a home in heaven, eternal in the heavenlies, hallelujah, these Mortal body can be destroyed. That is why mortality is crying that we will be clothed in life by that which is immortal, that which is unlimited, that which cannot be decayed, that which cannot die. I just want to let you know that if you have gone through the cross and acknowledge Jesus for yourself, if you have gone to the cross and the Holy Spirit have come inside of you, hallelujah, this body shall stand, it shall not be destroyed. There is that which is inside of you, hallelujah, that is related to life. So, if this body is a target by darkness or a target by the devil to destroy, your soul is indestructible. Your soul is indestructible. I bring you a living hope. We will live. We will live and we will not die premature. We will live to fulfill the agenda, the assignment for which God has brought us, for which God has brought us to this planet Earth. Let somebody's faith rise. Let somebody's hope sharpen. See something you have not seen before. See something in Christ. Because the word says that if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, hallelujah, we are in him because of his blood. We are in him because of the sea spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. We are patterned after him. His life is our pattern. His victory is our pattern. Hallelujah. What is impossible with man 
and was possible with Christ is the same is possible with us because God has given us the power to rise from our slumber. There is hope for a living. There is hope for living. There is hope for living. Tap somebody by you and tell the person there is hope for living. In the name of Jesus. Praise God somebody. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 16. For all things are of for all things are for your sake, that the abundant grace might through the tongues given of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Our hope is not in this mortal body. Our hope is not in the world that will soon fold. Our hope is not in things that are made by man, where the Bible says that they shall be shaken. A lot more are weak in the faith. They've lost their place. They are weak in their belief system because the world has taken over them. All that they live for is for material things. And there's no salvation in any of these material things. But you know what? It is good to be successful in life. Whereas at the same time, you have the grace to enjoy the success you have. It is good to be blessed in life. Whereas God's grace is abundant in you with peace, with health, to enjoy the success that you have. He made his life abound towards us to the glory of God and the hope that we hang on is that though our outward man perish yet the inward man is renewed day by day I told you the other day any time that I'm weak, then I am strong because God gives me the antidote out of my weakness. Anytime I feel like putting it down, anytime that I feel like returning, there is a hand that is beckoning me. There is a voice talking to me. And this is the voice of the Spirit. He will say, All things are possible. Not by me, but all things are possible through Christ who strengthens us by the resurrection power. I want you to get it. Resurrection power. Dunamis. Dynamite. A quickening grace. Wow! That will revive us and make us alive again. This morning, I speak to you and I speak direct into your spirit. That that which has led you down, that that which is playing the weak inside of you, that that which is turning you around like a slave, I want you to know that the chains of their control and authority is broken and Christ is reviving us again be quickened rise up let your spirit be quickened be resurrected stand strong and strong tall against any provocation against anything that led down 
We serve a living God. The Lord is at work in us to do of his will and to fulfill of his pleasure. You are the hope of Christ on this earth. He will do great things through us. So this is not a time to give up. The spirit can play dummy inside of us. But when we take our focus away from Christ, we are like those who are led like sheep to the slaughter. The world can carve us. The world can hem us. This earth cannot carve us. They can carve us in. They can hem us in. They cannot limit us. There is great things to be accomplished at this time because Christ is coming again. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. In John chapter 14 verse 12, Jesus talking to his disciples, he said, Very, very, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than this shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Greater works. And these greater works can only be accomplished when we start stop playing church. These greater works can only happen when we stop compromising. Compromising with the world. The church doesn't want to permeate the world. But the world is permeating the church. And who are doing that? We are bringing the world into the church. The church is living as an orphan on this earth. We've completely lost it. We have no hope. Our conversations are always patterned with what the world directs. Not after Christ. Not after what the Lord says, but after what the world is saying. So we are being led by the world. The Bible says, greater works will we do. This is the time you and I must rise to show leadership. This is the time you and I will say that our God is an answer. Brethren, you know what? Presently, when we got to know that the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom was uh, hospitalized and he was taken to intensive care, it brought sudden quietness and sorrow to many hearts. Some people, at most, they can do is to clap for the Prime Minister. What can clap do for the Prime Minister? Is clapping the healing bound? No. The Lord say our thought is with him. Can your thought accomplish anything? No. But you know what? We have God who is an answer to the things that we have no answer to. None of us understand why he has to go to the intensive care. But you know what? We believe in the governance and the true governance of a nation. And the Bible said there is no government that God has not sanctioned. So we should pray for our leaders. So what happened quickly? The church rallied around. We were asked to pray for the prime minister. And we pray unto God. For the Prime Minister, that the hand of the Lord might turn things around. Do you know what happened? God influenced a direct action. He gave insight to the medical team as to what ought to be done at that time. This is what makes a difference. UK must rise back to their religious faith. 
where Christ was Lord over our nation. We must get back to where we have left it off. A life of segregation and a life of apathy towards God plunge our nation in total darkness. We have to rise that the Lord God will be God of this nation. The word of God says that greater works will we do. And the Christian Bible have said it emphatically and have spew out the remedy in the name of Jesus for which you and I we are waiting for which you and I God is expecting us to stand and to act in the name of Jesus I pray that some new life will enter into you I pray that some boldness will take over you I pray that your life will be quickened again in Jesus mighty name pray the name of the Lord the Bible said in Psalm 16 verse 10, the Bible said, For thou will not leave my soul. I want to repeat again. Psalm 16 verse 10, For thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Who was the Bible referring to? The Bible was referring to Jesus among all mortal men who ever lived on this planet Earth. God has decisive assignment and he has, he has made declaration that Jesus will be a forerunner, a forerunner of hope for hope, a forerunner for, for peace, a forerunner for mighty and great things that men cannot do because they are limited. He has to go to the grave. He has to preach to the souls who were imprisoned before him. He has to put the enemy bound who has tortured and tormented man. He has to bound them and let captivity captive. And gave gifts to man. Hallelujah. For thou will not leave my soul in hell. Neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. If this scripture referred to Jesus. This scripture applied to us also. Do you know why? Because his life is in us. And our life is in Him. Whatever applies to Him applies to us. And we can openly and boldly confess it. For you, O oh God, will not leave my soul in hell. Something right on this earth is trying to pull us to the dark side where we came from. Want to say that we don't belong there. Then our conversation was like their conversation. But I'm telling you now, we don't belong there. For thou will not leave my soul in hell. I'm not going to go to the pit with the people. Now, so you have to decide. Whose side you belong to? Which company you want to go with? You have to decide. You have to decide how you're going to live your life. Neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. This is the life that Christ has given to us. We've been imparted with this life. Hallelujah. In Christ Jesus, we are made righteous through the righteousness of Christ. So we can appropriately confess this scripture that the Lord is my helper. What can man do unto me? We can appropriately confess this scripture, hallelujah, that we are made for eternal life. We are not made for hell. When we talk about hell, people thought that 
It's just one of the myths. And I tell you, hell is real. The devil knows that hell is real. All right. Look at the situation around us today. This is not hell. This is not hell. But this is a situation that is unbearable. Everybody is running. Everybody is confused. Everybody doesn't know what the next day will turn for them. This is not hell. This is not hell. But when the real, real, real tribulation comes, there will be much sorrowful, much troubling, much painful than we ever thought. I'm urging us all to run from the world. And come into the blessed hope of Christ. His arms are open. Hallelujah. If we cannot live the life of faith, He will empower us to always please Him and live a life fulfilling on this earth. In Jesus' mighty name. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 4 to 5 says, And that he was buried, and that he arose again the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. So what does this mean? It's trying to mean that Jesus' resurrection is not myth. Jesus' resurrection is not myth because the Christian faith is historically truthful, geographically truthful, and the evidence is real for us. Jesus rose again and there were eyewitnesses that saw him. The devil knew it. The devil knew it. He has put all impediment in his path, making it impossible for him to go to the cross. Number two, making it impossible for him to rise again. And you know what? We know what the scripture says. Hey, the Bible says that. There were God's place at the tomb where Jesus was buried. And the guards were to guard and make sure that his disciples does not come to steal him away. That is how the world, because they are always fraudulent. The world is always fraudulent. And the thought the church is also like that. So right from that day, right from the Bible time, there was fraud. There was fraud. So, Soldiers were stationed at his tomb. And the tomb was was what? Was perpetually sealed with the seal of authority. But you see, there is a spirit that works within. And the spirit is the creative power of God. The spirit is the Holy Spirit. It is the third personality of God. Wow. Whatever is sealed can be exposed. That power can never be contained or resisted. When the third day came as Jesus promised, that power quickened the body of Christ. He brought him back to life again. And the Bible says that the angel of the Lord, God sent an angel to roll away the stone that sealed the tomb in the name of Jesus. Are you sealed in? Are you hemmed in? Are you bottled within? All around you, you are seeing impossibility. Lack of hope. 
This morning in Jesus' mighty name I say, every seal that is put on you, those seal is broken in the name of Jesus. Every seal the devil has placed on you, every limitation the enemy has placed on you in the name of Jesus by the resurrection power of Christ, ooh, that seal is broken and is removed. And what does the word of God says? He says, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. We are higher than high because the Bible says, He made us seated in heavenly places with Him. So what is under us? Defeat is under us. Sorrow is beneath us. We trample over all these things. You should decide. You should decide. To bring these promises alive in you. It is possible with God, but it's impossible with men. So, as I said, the resurrection has made us seated in heavenly places with Christ. This is an act of faith. Our spirit is on this earth when our spirit is seated in heavenly places with Christ. Hallelujah. With heavenly places with Christ, far more above principalities and far more above powers. Romans chapter 8 verse 9 says the following, and I quote, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. I want to repeat again. But ye are not of the flesh, but in the Spirit. Believers are in the Spirit. The child of God must be in the Spirit. Why? Because the Spirit of God dwells in you and not of the world. We won't live 24 7 of a day so conscious about the polarized world, the perishing world, and become sorrowful. And become misplaced. No. While the world think about things that are happening around, we are thinking about a sudden flight out of it. Yes, this is where God wants us to be. He wants us to position ourselves on the knowledge of fact. This fact worked marvelously, miraculously, mighty things in us, in the name of Jesus. So, you have the same Spirit of God who created all things. You have the same Spirit who raised Christ from the dead. And you have the same Spirit of God by whom Jesus cast demons. The Spirit that raised Him from the dead is in you. You can cast demons. You can resist the devil and he shall flee away from you. Because you are producing beyond human limitation. There's the power that make us supernatural. We are of the flesh, we are of blood, but we are beyond what people see. Oh, hallelujah. We are supernatural. You can decide to keep yourself there, act like one, or you can play the dummy. I ain't going to play the dummy. I'm going to live supernaturally, live victoriously, live powerful. You know, church, things happen. There are situations that, 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 that come, of which I'm a witness. 
and some people are so distraught on some situation they are worried they, they, they don't know how to manage it and all of a sudden when 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 when, when the issue is brought to me I settle down in peace because I'm not going to rush for a decision. And I pray to God and I say, Lord, give me an insight. Tell me exactly what I must do in this situation to save this person, to turn his condition or condition around for good. Then all of a sudden, the Lord will speak into my spirit, either to lay hands or to bring encouraging words or to go into my closet to pray. And several times, these have come to me and the result has always been awesome. Every leading that I have of the Spirit, when I act on it, I see results. People are getting healed. People are getting restored. People are getting encouraged. Hallelujah. Their frustration rolled off and there's a smile on their face again. This is the spirit with which Jesus, our Lord, cast out demons. And they have no place in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. 1 John 2, 20 and verse 27 says that, I want to read it. He says, But ye have an unction from the Holy One. And ye know all things. You have an unction from the Holy One. The unction is the enabling power of the Holy Spirit. Unction. Others call it the anointing. The power to produce beyond human limitation. And the capacity is always very high. He said because we've been anointed in a particular way. Hallelujah. We know all things. If we know all things, then we can do all things through Christ who empowers us. You can do all things through Christ who empowers you. The Resurrection Sunday is a moment of jubilation, but at the same time is the moment of strength. What kind of strength? Strength to do the impossible. Christ is the God of love. Christ is the God of forgiveness. Christ is long-suffering. Christ is temperate in all things. So here we are. There is just something that is hindering us and making it very difficult for us to produce beyond the human level. Difficult to forgive. It is just difficult to love. This is not the time for us to be settled on these petty squabbles. He hurt me. Yes, he hurt you. Forgive those who hurt you. Why? Because love covers multitude of sins and perfect love casts away all fears. There's no fear in love. So if you live in love, you live in forgiveness. You are temperate. You are patient. You are humble. But ye have an unction from the Holy One. And ye know all things. Hallelujah, somebody. Verse 27 says, and I read. It says, but the anointing which you have received of him, I bide it in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him.
I have an un I have an unction to know the mind of God. I have an unction to know his seasons, what he does and what is not doing. I have an unction that God will not hinder or God will not hide from us what he is doing. At the end, Jesus said it, that perilous time shall come. Disturbing moments shall come. Whether it's a biological weapon or a weapon of man, yes. Because God always uses the devil to fulfill his scriptures. Sometimes. When it's of evil, you let the enemy take the lead and play it so that the scriptures will be fulfilled. Perilous times shall come. We know of it. You must know. This unction will give you insight of what is going on. Relax. Stay indoors. Stay close to your God. Amend your ways. Restore your faith again. Embrace the Lord. And remain in Him until this plague pass. In Jesus' name. You have the anointing to do the impossible. We have anointed to do what is right and to do it well. That is what the anointing God has given to us. So it is not only men of God, ministers of the gospel, prophets, those who are living in self acclaim, accolades, or whatever. They are not only the careers of unction. He said, He has given to the believer an anointing, an unction. We're not going to allow uh, any, any pastor to live your life for you. He faces his world and he must contend with what contend against him. You are going to face your world. You have to contend against what contend against you. That is the reason why we have an unction from the Holy One, the Holy Spirit of God. Is that unction? Is that anointing? The enabling power. He quickened us from the dummy. Oh, to 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 resort bearers in Jesus' mighty name. What we cannot do, which is impossible according to the flesh, through the Holy Spirit, it is possible. Through the Holy Spirit, it is what it is possible. We have anointing to hedge every liberty that we have on this earth. For God's sake, make a difference. For God's sake, let somebody see you as of a different speech on this earth. Let somebody recognize that something extraordinary is happening in your life you are not the same. You are not like any other person. Yes, in Jesus' mighty name, you are unique because Christ has made you unique. You must be the focus because what is impossible with them can be possible with us, you, in Jesus' name. Praise God, somebody. Verse 13 to verse 16, it says, For if ye live after the flesh you shall die but if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body you shall live what's the meaning of mortify mortify means what kill the flesh bring the flesh under control through the spirit kill it 
Kill the fear in you. Kill the hopelessness in you that exerts on your strength in life. Kill it. Kill those things. Mortify the deeds of the body and you shall live. It is our spirit that must be leading the body. It is not the body that ought to be leading the spirit. It's all trouble and sorrow when the body is leading our spirit. It leads us into wrong decisions and we regret for those decisions. It leads us to wrong actions and we regret for those actions. When the spirit decides and the spirit cannot fail, it cannot lie. The spirit of God cannot lie. In the name of Jesus. Verse 14 says that, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Abba, Father, God, our Father, a closest friend, our helper in time of need. Oh, hallelujah. The Spirit within us does not lead us to bondage. It does not lead us into fear. We will not fear because... Christ went to the grave. Christ rose up again the third day and handed over to us the hope of the ages and that which is to come. I am stirred within. Oh, I am stirred within. I'm being transformed within. I'm having an edge over a limit. Oh my, my God. I'm having an edge over a limit. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. I'm just so excited of this living word. I'm just so excited. And I repeat again, I am just so excited. The spirit itself bears witness, assisting, bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. If we are the children of God, then we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. You see, we are heirs of God and we are joint heirs with Christ. Verse 17. And if children, then heirs and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may we may be also glorified together. Hallelujah. 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 I want to encourage you. Hang on there. Hang on in there. There's not a time to quit. Hang on in there. There's not a time to sorrow. Hang on in there. This is not a time to fear and play in the hand of the elements and demons and the devil. Hang on in there. As I bring this teaching to a close, I want to bring you the impact of this resurrection power in the lives of believers. Some of the impacts. And I want to start with, 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 with scripture. I want to start with the apostles. The resurrection power in the apostles. For instance, in Acts chapter 5, verse 15 
to verse 16, the word of God says that, Inasmuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets, and laid them on the beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. Verse 16, There came also a multitude out of the cities round about into Jerusalem, bringing sick foes and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. This is the power of resurrection, the spirit that quickens. So I said it. I said it. If you are a child of God, and this spirit is inside of you, greater works will we do. Oh, hallelujah. This is the impact on the believer, the sign that can be evident, that can be seen. That we can do in Jesus' mighty name. Peter was just a mortal man. But what changed his life is the resurrection power. What changed his life is the spirit that raised Christ from the dead and did what? And quickened his mortal bodies. We all know that Jesus, we don't know that Peter was a fisherman. Full of a limitation. There was one that quit on Christ. One at a time. Christ had not died in Rosa. It was the one who was restored when Christ rose up from the dead. It was the one. You know what? It was the one whose life was mightily and positively imparted when the Holy Spirit came into him and touched his life. And one who was coward and fearful overcame cowardice. He was made strong and bold. And he faced the world and preached such a wonderful sermon that brought conviction to the heart of the sinner and bring transformation to sinful people. And many were saved in Christ Jesus. This is the one that what is impossible with man. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? What is inside this man? That while he was walking, his shadow was healing people. His shadow was what? Delivering people. And the Bible says that the demons were crying and leaving the people. I release this religion power into your life. I release this religion power into your home. That Anything that is, that is unwanted around you, anything that is unwanted in your home, anything that is unwanted in your life will cry out of you because they can't stay and they have not been given permission to stay in Jesus' mighty name. So this is what happened. The same that happened to Peter, the same can happen to you in the name of Jesus. In Acts chapter 19, Verse 11 to 12, the Bible said, And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons. And the disease departed from them, and the evil spirit went out of them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is in that body? What is that body carrying? That body is carrying Christ. Inside that body is the word of God. Inside that body is faith to practice. Inside that body, above all, is the power of the Holy Spirit. That makes it such that handkerchiefs, will be brought to touch Paul's body and the same handkerchief will be placed on the sick. It will be placed on them, those who are possessed with demons and they were healed of their sicknesses and their demons flew from them in the name of Jesus. There was a time and several times the Lord will instruct me to put a handkerchief on somebody the Lord will instruct me. Bless a bottle of water. The Lord will instruct me. Remove your jacket and hang it on, on the sick. 
and tremendous miracles happen. I can't just see myself doing that, but I can see that there is something extraordinary, unique inside of me, which is the Holy Spirit, which has transformed me, a mortal man, operating beyond the capacity of a man, of a human. Oh, hallelujah. Greater works will we do because of the resurrection power. This morning, may the Lord touch you. This morning, may the Lord quicken you. This morning, may you rise in hope. May you rise in faith. There's nothing on this planet Earth that you cannot achieve. But God has given us power to be successful. He has given us power to live a happy life. He has given us that power to live a happy life. Go deep in God and discover the things that are freely given to us. The things that are freely given to you that pertains to life and pertains to godliness. Don't be idle. For you have not yet discovered what ought to be discovered. And when you have found it, it's like a pearl of good pride. A pearl is like a pearl that you have to prize in the name of Jesus. If we be raised from the dead and the living will be caught up in the air at the second coming of Christ, then I don't want you to miss it. That is what the Bible says. So if you are not in Christ, during his second coming, you will miss it. If you are not firmly rooted in Christ during his second coming, you will miss it. So this resurrection power, not only are we empowered to be victorious on earth, but it's the same power that will raise the dead. It's the same power that will make the living transformed and be caught up in the heavens when Christ is coming at the appearing of Christ Jesus. It is by the sake that we will be judged. It is by the same that we will escape condemnation. This morning I want to invite those of you who are listening to me either you are part of the listeners or you've been invited to listen to this morning broadcast. This Hosanna Sunday, the Resurrection Sunday, the Celebration Sunday. And you have listened. You cannot just listen and leave. You have to be part of this journey. Be part of the happiest people on earth. Be part of of the joy within us. Be part of it and experience it for yourself. Be part of this transformation grace and be part of this living hope. If you are listening to me, wherever, I want you to make a decision for yourself today that the way I am living my life Is he appropriate the way I'm living my life? I'm living my life as though there is no day of reckoning. There is surely a day of reckoning. Because every human has a source. And I want to encourage you. That when you surrender your life to Christ today, I acknowledge him that he is God, he exists, and by him all things exist. And that you cannot do anything in this world without him. And invite him into your life. He will receive you. And changes will begin to happen in your life. What you cannot accomplish. The life of righteousness you cannot accomplish. The life of love that you cannot accomplish. The hope that you cannot accomplish. He will live this life through you. He will give you the power. He will give you the enablement. For you to live. And above all. God will right your wrongs. And start all over with you. And the life ahead of you will be much more glorious and joyfully lived than the one you have lived. 
And therefore, you want to pray this prayer with me? Lord Jesus, I do acknowledge you to be Lord and God. I do acknowledge myself also that I am a sinner for which I am repenting of my sins. I surrender myself to you that take over my life and live your life through me in the name of Jesus. If you have prayed this prayer with me this morning, I want you to know that you have crossed from one end to another. The Bible said you have crossed from condemnation to life and unto justification. You have crossed from darkness to light and you've got to continue living by this light. By this, I'm trying to let you know that you cannot live your new life in isolation. You have to locate a Bible-believing church. And this time that the church is hidden away, just follow the lead on our page. And on our Facebook page, you can just drop a line, one or two, and somebody will be there to respond to you. Prepare yourself for a very good day and a good time that is coming. And it will be long. In the name of Jesus. And beloved, this is for the church. And I know there's a smile on your faces this morning. Hallelujah. Because these words have answered your questions. This word have raised your hope again. And you're all of a sudden rising. You're all of a sudden on your feet again. Hallelujah. That's the place I am also. What is it too hard? It's nothing too hard for God to do. With Him all things are possible. If you have any need, surrender it to God. If you have any challenges, invite Him. You need a touch on your life. He will touch you. So let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for the revelation on covering of this insight regarding the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus and his impact on our life and the implication that it has also on the life of those who have not come to know him. Of course, there's a power that is working within us. And this power is contending against darkness. And therefore, in the name of Jesus, I pray against darkness that want to pull you down. I pray against any warfare that is dragging you into the abyss. I'm praying against the confusion in your life, the confusion in your home. I am praying against it in Jesus' mighty name. And I'm bringing restoration to you as a family or as an individual, as a community. I'm bringing restoration in the name of Jesus. Raise up your head again and for once believe that God, the living God, have an ear and he have heard your cry. I release soundness into your body. I release peace into your body. I release health into your body. I release joy into your body. In the name of Jesus. I release it in you. In the name of Jesus. I come against the terror around your surrounding. The surrounding will never terrify you in Jesus' mighty name. For the demons that are responsible, I bind them in Jesus' mighty name. You cannot be rejected from your home. You cannot be rejected in the name of Jesus. May your home bring peace, soundness to you in Jesus' mighty name. Above all, I pray that the toxic and the poison that is in the world Call this coronavirus. May this virus be very far from you. The air you breathe shall not be toxic. 
The air you breathe shall not be virus in the name of Jesus. And God have heard our prayer. We should be people of discipline and discipline ourselves in this time of struggle. And the Lord your God is with you. So we share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. The Lord our God, who raised Christ from, who raised Christ from the dead, should be unto you a living hope, protect you, preserve you, and keep you until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God richly bless you. I come your way again on Thursday, coming Thursday, and I come your way again on Sundays. Follow us live on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you. Amen. Bye-bye.